If you've got the Inkbird ITC-608T and you're not quite sure how to set it up, you know, for heating and cooling, well, you're in the right place. In this video, I'll walk you through the two ways to use it. A super simple single probe setup and the advanced setting using both probes for more control over your space. Let's start with a quick overview of the thermostat. So if you've got the ITC-608T, it should look like this. It has two sockets, a work one and a work two, a display, a few buttons on the side, and where the one and the two probe would go in here. The basic setup with one probe is great if you want just a quick setup for your heating and your cooling, and you don't need too much customization. So you would just simply plug in one temperature probe into the T1 port, and then you would plug your heater into the outlet labeled work one and your fan or exhaust system into the one that's labeled work two. Then you would plug the unit into the power outlet. We're actually going to plug all the equipment in later. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and take the time to set the temperature first. Now on a quick note, the manual can be a bit complicated and somewhat cumbersome. So throughout this video, we're going to try to explain this thermostat as simply and as easily as we can. Let's take a closer look at our display. Now this is out of the box standard settings. So your top number is gonna be your current temperature. Your bottom number is gonna be the temperature, your desired temperature. So let's set our desired temperature. Simply hit the set button one time, it'll start to flash. You can adjust the temperature up or you can adjust it down. We're gonna go to 70 degrees. Now that you've got your desired temperature, hit the set button one more time. Now you're set at 70 degrees. Now let's go a little further and go deeper into the main menu. Simply press and hold your set button. Now we're in the main menu. We're representing our set temperature. Hit it one more time. We'll go into our heating differential and our cooling differential. Now we'll go into this in a little further detail here shortly. To get back to your main menu, you wanna hold and press the main button. Now we're back to our main menu. Okay, so let's take a moment to explain the heating and cooling differential. Because the manual can be a little complicated. So briefly put, the heating differential is going to be the heating range that you set for your heater to turn on or turn off. So our temperature is set at 70 degrees. We have a heating differential of 10 degrees, meaning our heater will allow the, the temperature to drop 10 degrees before it engages the heater to raise our temperature back to our desired temperature of 70 degrees. The cooling differential is the exact opposite. Our cooling differential will allow our temperature to raise five degrees, that's what we set it at, before our cooling apparatuses kick on to lower our temperature back down to our 70 degrees. So pretty straightforward if you step back and look at it. Now let's go over a few additional features in the menu. Simply hit your set button, which will bring you back to the main menu. So we're gonna to toggle from our set temperature into our heat differential, our cooling differential, right into our alarm high and I alarm low. The high alarm and the low alarm, these you'll be able to set the temperature ranges of which you wanna be notified if the temperature gets a little too hot or it gets a little too cold in your greenhouse. Then we get into our compressor delay. If you have a compressor, say an AC compressor, you can set the delay so that you don't burn up your compressor. Nice feature. Then we'll go into our temperature calibration. If you have multiple thermostats and you notice that they don't quite have the same reading, you can go in here and adjust these temperature settings to set all your readings to be the same. Then we'll get into our settings as far as Celsius or Fahrenheit. Now we have it at Fahrenheit, so we're gonna leave it there. Then we get into our timer setting. We can actually set this thing to have a timer to come on when we want it to and run for as long as we would like it to run. So a pretty neat little feature. Now, once you've made all your adjustments to lock in and save your settings, simply hold the set button and it'll bring you back to your main display with all your settings recorded and saved. Now, any of these features that we just recorded, if you wanna see a more of a more detailed video, simply let us know which feature you'd like for us to really get in depth with. Now that you've set your heating and cooling differential, let's verify that. 
Use, utilizing your two toggles, you can simply go up for your heating differential and use the down for your cooling differential. Now, the challenge with this one probe setup is that it doesn't handle the temperature well, the temperature range very well. Sure, you know, it can widen the heating and cooling differential, but it still is not ideal. Okay, so for example, let's say you're totally fine with a range between 50 and 70 degrees. You'd set your temperature range at about 60 and then set both the heating and the cooling differential to 10. So that way, the heater kicks in well, right around 50 and then it stops heating once it hits 60. But on the flip side, the fan kicks in at 70 and cools everything down until it hits about 60. But here's the issue. You may not really need the whole heat, the whole greenhouse up to 60. Maybe you'd be fine with 50 at night. So then in the evenings, you may want to keep some warmth in instead of the cooling the greenhouse down to 60. You know, just to, just to save some energy on heating. That's when the two probe setup is the most powerful. It's, uh, it lets you fine tune control over both ends of your space. All right, now let's talk about how to actually do that with both probes to monitor oh, different parts of your space and to control heating and cooling separately. So once we insert our secondary probe, you can see that our readings immediately change. Now we have both current temperatures reading on the top and the bottom. Now there, with this point, you might be wondering where are my set temperatures? Well, just like we did before, simply hit your set button. If it's flashing on the top, that will be your probe one. It's flashing on the bottom, that will be your probe two. So just for giggles, let's change the temperature just a little bit. This one, drop this one to 76. Previously, we had toggled between the, the heat differential and the cooling differential. Well, with two probes, you can toggle between your set temperatures of probe one and your set temperatures of probe two. So a little bit different, but, all, but pretty much the same feature. Now let's get into the main menu and adjust the features of each one of the probes. So once again, hold your set button, which will bring you back to the main menu. Now, since we're setting up both probes, we can adjust between Celsius and Fahrenheit. So we're gonna stay with Fahrenheit, but you can simply adjust between the two. Now we're getting into the, the key element of this. Now before, I'm sorry, I failed to mention this, but before when we were utilizing one probe, work one was strictly heat, work two was strictly cooling. Now that we have two probes, we can adjust each of the work one and work two. We can make this heating and cooling, or we can make this heating or cooling. So we have options. So now we can adjust this between either heating or cooling for probe one, for work one, but we're gonna leave this at heating. But as you can see, you can go back and forth between the two, but we'll leave it at heating for now. Now we're getting into our set temperature. Now remember, this is gonna affect our heater. So let's adjust this down to a lower temperature because we don't want our heater to kick on at 77. Let's make it to 55. Now we're at a very important junction here. This is our differential settings here. Now, previously we had to adjust for our heating and our cooling differential. Since we've set this probe at a heater, we're only gonna have to adjust the differential for the heater. So we're gonna adjust this up to five degrees. Set that there, let's go to the next one. Here we once again have our alarm high, our alarm low. We also have our compression settings and then we get into our temperature probe. Now we're getting into probe number two. Now, once again, we can set this one at a heater or as cool. So heating or cooling, we're gonna make probe two into the cooling setting. So set that on C, move on over. Now we can set once again our set temperature or our temperature, desired temperature. We're gonna drop this one down to 70 because this is our, gonna be our cooling. Go to our next one. Once again, we're back into our differential heating or differential cooling. One setting, one probe. So we're gonna set this one at three, per, three degrees. We're already set there, so we'll leave that be. Once again, an alarm high, an alarm low. Our compression setting, our temperature regulation, our temperature calibration. And now we're back to the very beginning. Simply hold your button and you're back to your main menu or your main display.
Now that you've got everything set, let's verify. You can press up. You now see that your heater is set at 55. You toggle down. Your cooling is now set at 70 degrees. Now, one quick way to verify what mode you're in will be by utilizing your indicator lights. Let's separate our probes. So probe one, we're using for our heat. The light is lower at the bottom. If it was gonna be cooling, there would be a light indicated higher to the top. Now let's look at probe two. Probe two has a light that's higher at the top. That's for cooling. If we were using heating, the light would be lower at the bottom. So just a quick little indicator, indicator of what mode you're in. All right, a little complicated, but I hope that helps. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about the setup. Thanks for watching and we'll catch y'all later.